Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? <clears throat> so what you drinking on over there, Mike? <laughs> uh, we're drinking Blanton's. Mm. It's a good Kentucky bourbon. The one. It's, the got, one, a little, it's got a little racehorse man on the top. It's the one with the horsey on top. Yeah. That, that's what I always call it when I get it out of the cabinet. It actually, uh, strangely, featured in um, one of the uh, Ghost in the Shell series. Really? Uh, I think it was Solid State Society or something. I can't remember what it was called. But in the first episode, um, one of the guys meets uh, an informant or something at a bar. And they have the bottle on the table. And, I mean, obviously they can't read the bottle or anything. But you it's, can, a, it's a roundish <laughs> bottle with a little racehorse on the top. And you're like, yeah, well, they're drinking It has to be Blattens. Yeah. Yeah, that's, all, that's all it could be. <clears throat> Well, it's a very good whiskey. It I, certainly is. I'm, I'm enjoying it neat tonight. So that's, and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm a big boy now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good uh, chicken and potatoes whiskey, which is what we just ate. So. That's true. Compliments it well. So, um, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the First Amendment. Yep. And we spent a great majority of the time. Like, we, we barely... Scratched really, the surface. Yeah. yeah, we really didn't get into a lot of stuff I would, <laughs> I would have liked to have gotten into, honestly. But uh, Well, we're in luck, because we spent most of our time talking about free speech last time, and yeah. we spent a few minutes talking about freedom of the press. Yeah. Um, but Julian Assange was arrested last week, actually a week ago today, yeah. um, from Ecuador's em- embassy in London. Presumably for jumping bail on a case that was dropped, but yeah, in reality it was um, it, it was really on extradition request from the U.S. So anyway, this gives us a, a really excellent opportunity to revisit <laughs> the First Amendment and speak yep. some about freedom of the press. Absolutely. And uh, so, <laughs> interestingly, um, one of the first things that came up is that. Uh, the question of whether Julian Assange is actually a journalist. Yeah, that's an interesting question because, like, how could he, in my mind, how could he not be a journalist? I mean, yeah, well, I mean, he has won uh, quite a few journalism awards and, in fact, was awarded another journalism award um, in the EU, like, earlier this week. <laughs> wow. <laughs> After his arrest. So uh, yeah. I think if you're basing it just off of, professional credentials i guess you'd say well he meets that requirement yeah I, but I would even say so. even if he didn't reach that standard I, I still think he he has to still be considered a journalist though i mean anybody who i thought the idea was that we were all the journalists like that these rights aren't separate you don't there's not a separate set of rights for citizens and a separate set for journalists yeah journalism it's all the same uh, journalist is not a class of people it's an activity yeah, yeah. that's right. that i think that's a, a a good way to frame it because that, that's yeah. um yeah I, so we said it before and I'll, I'll just try and restate it here the first amendment connects actually all these things are connected but the the very specifically with punctuation connects free speech and freedom of the press and as i said before freedom of the press in the late 18th century really meant literally the printing press. Yeah. And so uh, free speech was the protection to think and say what you please in private and in public. Yeah. And freedom of the press was the the freedom to disseminate that information. Absolutely. That the government can't prevent dissemination of really anything. Of anything, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, So by that measure... We are press. Yeah. I mean, right now. I mean, it includes, uh, I would say, I would say that it includes in its spirit all um, physical and digital media. Oh, absolutely. And uh, so, the, yeah, his, his speech is protected. And while he's not a U.S. citizen, which seems like another important point. That is a very make, important but, point. He's, um, these are still human rights, though. Right. They're not, they're not. Just because you don't have to be a U.S. citizen to 
for for the U.S. to recognize those rights. Yes, our, our founding fathers wrote those the Bill of Rights based on their understanding of human rights, of yeah. natural rights, yeah. uh, to be you know More, technically correct. Yeah. I guess yeah. um, the things that are inherent uh, because of your humanity that are you know that essentially it, it comes out of property rights. You own yourself. You own your ideas. You own what what you produce, which includes yeah. your speech, absolutely, um, your thoughts, etc. And uh, in the case of the press, what they were saying is that the government can't prevent someone who has the capability of disseminating information from doing it. Yeah, like, absolutely. Now, the person who owns the printing press or whatever, yeah. uh, as a private owner, can stop me, but the government can't. Absolutely. So don't tell anybody, but like my ISP could turn this off and you know, <laughs> yeah, right. um, well, the hosting sites or what have you, but hopefully yeah. they and, won't. <laughs> well, but we've seen a lot of that already. I mean, the Alex, the Alex Jones stuff kind of gives you an idea of, of exactly that. And I'm no Alex Jones fan, but what, what was done to him was wrong. But at the same time, it wasn't the government that did that to him, mm-hmm. at least as far as we know. Yeah, I mean, I have my suspicions based on how coordinated it was. Well, but and that's that's kind of where I'm at. I think someone at some level kind of yeah. coordinated. And all we know that. all these companies are in bed with the government, yeah. or yeah. they're in bed with the government. Yeah. So at least your big ones. Yeah. Well, uh, in this particular case, especially, uh, I do want to I want to point out that there's no, and this is an important point also yeah. on the Assange case. Yeah. There's no new information in this case. Yeah. This is information that was known, like all of this whole, well, I mean, I guess we're talking about the, the password issue and hacker. Maybe I'm getting a little ahead of our, of, of us. Yeah. Um, Maybe do a little background or yeah, first. Well, yeah, let's back it up a little bit. I, I think that uh, for the most part, people were on the side of Julian Assange years ago and yeah. that public opinion shifted. Uh, because of the DNC leaks. Now, yeah. I, I guess for those who don't know, Julian Assange runs the WikiLeaks website. He um, accepts leaked information from almost any source. He's actually really good about or keeping the, his sources. Yeah, well, that's an that's also important. But yeah. I was going to say there, the WikiLeaks site is really good at verifying. Ah, making the, sure they're not putting out garbage. Yeah, that everything's authentic, yeah. and they have never been accused of putting out anything that was inauthentic. Yeah. Like ever, ever, yeah. Um, <clears throat> they're also very good at protecting their sources, which yeah. um, many would say uh, was an important ethical duty of uh, of a journalist. Absolutely, um, to do everything they can to protect their sources. More on that later. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that public opinion about Assange and WikiLeaks really shifted uh, after the DNC leaks, yeah. um, the Democratic National Committee. Uh, email leaks, which exposed what the Democrat Party was doing to ensure that um, that the deck was stacked against Bernie Sanders, and yeah. um, that a lot of a lot of people think that that particular leak may have resulted in Trump being elected instead of Hillary. Well, the, it's it's kind of interesting with the people I've spoke with, the handful of people about just the subject. Nobody really knows where to come down. On Julian Assange, like like it has to be one or the other. Like you either have to love him or you have to hate him. But the truth is, it's hard to come down one way or the other if you're a partisan, because he's he's an equal opportunity. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we may have a power surge. <laughs> we just had a power surge. <laughs> I hope well, we don't lose you guys. <laughs> um, but no, it's if you're a partisan, I mean, you really don't know where to come down because he's equal opportunity. He's he's yeah. taken shots at both sides. <clears throat> well, there was the documentary that was put out about him where he was talking about the information on Hillary Clinton that they were going to put out and his source that he was on the phone with you saying, or maybe it was somebody else within the organization. I don't remember. It's been a while. Yeah. I mean, this was 20, 20, 12? 16, I guess. Uh, or, anyway, um, but he was saying uh, that he he wished he had some information, some damaging information on Trump. Oh, yeah, to to balance it out. Well, it wasn't about balance. It was just about, yeah. you know, it's He's, got to be there. It's right? out like, there, yeah. <laughs> there, it's there. Like, yeah. yeah, this guy's been operating for a long time. <laughs> yeah, he's a New yeah. York real estate tycoon. But There's got to be some corruption back there somewhere. Well, but. just just to give a brief <clears throat> on that, though, like, I think that all of Trump's stuff's pretty well aired out. 
Like, I, I really do think he's one of those that just, I mean, I'm sure there's like some, some fuzzy stuff mm-hmm. like in his books somewhere or in his taxes somewhere, but I think the real kids are all out there, man. <laughs> the guy doesn't really seem to be embarrassed about anything about either. About anything. Yeah. Like, he owns it all, man. Yeah. Like, well, that's the way to do it, too, I think, in this day and age. You just say, yep. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> that's, that's who I am. Yeah, I said that. Mm-hmm. Um, now, while public opinion has shifted because of the DNC leaks and, yeah. and the absolute hate for Trump by so many people yeah. um, that ha- I, I think that that's permitted the U S government to pursue Assange without a, a big public outcry. Yeah. Um, and particularly without a big outcry from the media, from major media. Yeah. That's, and that's the one that shocks me the most. I really kind of expected at least earlier on, and we may, we're still in the early stages here, so this could change, but I did expect that the, the media companies to kind of come out, more in support of him because i mean all it takes is for one to fall and and the rest will follow suit i mean if they can do this to him what can they do to us right i mean is how they should and that's normally how they see it they're normally when it comes to issues of free speech they norm the media normally bands together pretty tight for that but they haven't this time well glenn glenn greenwald and matt taibbi two very left-wing journalists yeah. um, have both written qu- quite a bit, especially Greenwald, actually, yeah. um, have both written quite a bit about exactly that, that yeah. what is it that separates Assange from Anyone the New York else. Times or, yeah. And, Absolutely. And, and it's really, it's nothing. Yeah. There, there's nothing. There's nothing, him. yeah. Um, that he did what any other journalist would do, that yeah. he um, encouraged an informant to give him more information, yeah. which is one of the things that they're, that's that they're in the indictment. Yeah. Um, and, but that's what any journalist would do in that situation. Yeah. If somebody has information and they bring it to you, yeah. you ask for more. Yeah. Because what else can you get? Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. And yeah. then, um, I, I, I guess we may as well hit the, the password issue because it's related here. Yeah. Uh, Cause that's the other big indictment that he, um, tried to help, um, uh, Manning and, Let's I will just, also point out that while the DNC leaks may have changed public opinion about it, yeah, that's what this is really about. Oh, it it's, absolutely it's is. It's the Afghan and Iraq war logs, yep. um, the you know the diplomatic cables, that information that Manning um, got to Assange. That's what it's really about because that was yeah. the like truly embarrassing thing for the U.S. government. Yeah, but in terms of the password, my understanding of this, and this is mostly again from uh, Glenn Greenwald's writings uh, over the last week um the he, he wasn't trying to help manning get information that manning didn't already have access to he was trying to help manning access that information in a way that would protect manning's identity yeah, yeah. um and that that which is which uh, is important as as a journalist yeah. to to protect your sources mm-hmm. like i mean that's that's a, a way to shield your source from yeah and yeah. like I said, both uh, Greenwald and Taibbi said that that was an ethical duty of a journalist yeah. was to do everything in their power to protect their sources if their sources could be protected. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, like I said, he wasn't trying to help him get information that he didn't already have access to. He was just trying to protect his identity. Yeah. And I say fair. And yeah. okay, so <laughs> on the Manning thing, now we mentioned last time actually too. Manning's back in prison. Yep. Um, and Manning's back in prison because... Sorry, I have to stop every time because I want to say he, but I got to <laughs> shift it, right? Yeah. So she will not... She refused to testify in front of a grand jury about the Assange case. So the grand yeah. jury... She already gave testimony years yeah. ago. Yeah. She served seven years in, pre- in prison for it yeah. um, before her sentence was commuted by Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, which is amazing kind of in and of itself because Barack yeah. Obama was no friend to the whistleblower. Who saw that coming? Yeah. Um, but she had already served more time than anybody ever had for leaking classified information. That that was a yeah. tremendous sentence. They, I think the sentence was something like 30 years or yeah, something Yeah, it, was, like it was a massive sentence that was commuted down. Yeah, and then even the seven years that she served was more than anybody had ever served for a similar crime. Yeah. All right. So that all being said... Um, she refused to testify again on the same subject, yeah. essentially. 
And I think that it's it's a good move for her. Not only because oh. she's standing on principle in terms of she said that she's not going to – that the whole system is too secretive, et cetera. Yeah. But it, it protects her from some of those process crimes that we've seen pop up out of the uh, Russiagate investigation. Yeah. yeah. So she gave testimony 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, and what could potentially happen if she testifies again on – the same subject. And what she said was, you already have my testimony. I've told you everything about this. Yeah. Go look at the records. Absolutely. Um, now, what could happen if she testifies again is if she says something a little different, remembering now that it's been almost 10 years since she testified the first time. If she says something a little different, then suddenly she is a, a criminal by lying under oath yeah. or, you know, it's something like that. It, it would be a process crime. Yeah. Um, the a process crime being something that wouldn't exist if they weren't investigating in the first place. Like it wouldn't have exactly. been a crime if they hadn't been asking the questions. Yeah. Um, and that's and that's where they get you is is on stuff just like that mm -hmm. where you know perjury. You you perjure yourself. Yeah. Basically. So both on the principal standpoint, where it's a secret court that she doesn't run principally on. stands against. Yeah. Um, but also because it's dangerous to her to testify on the same subject. Yeah. Absolutely. Just because if she says something a little bit different, she has now suddenly committed a crime. Yep, yep. And the FBI gets people on that all the time, by the way. Yeah. Um, and if you want to read more about this, uh, actually, uh, Janine Jackson at FAIR. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let me just go ahead and say that somebody <laughs> said that we didn't cite our sources enough, so I'm trying to go out of my way to at least mention some people that I've been reading on these subjects. Yeah. So you can go look some stuff up yourself, but... Um, Janine Jackson writes at FAIR, which is uh, Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. It's FAIR.com, FAIR.org, okay. something like that. Anyway, she's been writing about Manning um, since this new event yeah. uh, in prison. There's actually a lot of good information in there that, that Janine's been writing about. Okay. Um, but the, the main thing that Manning did in the first place was expose a, a bunch of corruption and criminal activity on the part of the U.S. government. Yeah. All right. So that's that's what she's in trouble for. Yeah. And um, just to just to recap a little bit of some of the information that that she was able to get out there to us through WikiLeaks, um, there was the uh, a bunch of unreported civilian deaths in Afghanistan. Um, there was that really famous video of the helicopter attack um, with the. Uh, with the soldiers like hooting and hollering, oh look, yeah, you know, I got that one. Whatever, where they killed a whole bunch of well, a whole bunch, like a dozen or so civilians, and two Reuters reporters. Um, and there's video of that. That happened in Baghdad, uh, so that was released as part of those leaks. Um, that the U.S. military was um, essentially permitting the torture of prisoners. By Iraqi security forces, they were just standing by and letting it letting happen. Letting it happen, yeah. Uh, that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton at the time ordered U.S. diplomats to spy on U.N. officials, oh, wow. uh, particularly um, the permanent representatives on the Security Council at the U.N. Um, that there was collusion between the within the U.S. government and with foreign governments to prevent the pursuit of the U.S. torture inquiries in um, in I after the Iraq War. Um, that the Yemen government was claiming credit for bombings that the U.S. Uh, military was doing while the U.S. was denying any activity, <laughs> any military activity in Yemen, yeah. um, that the, the U.S.'s willing failure to respond to the Honduran coup, uh, knowing that it was not a legal coup, and then just kind of ignoring that information and allowing it to play out because they, they liked where it was going. <laughs> um so those are just like a few of the things that were released in this in this giant leak. Yeah. And uh I think that it is probably really important in a democracy that those of us that are paying for all this activity yeah. know about it. And and that's kind of it, you know. I mean, we're we're paying for our government to do this for us, you know. They're, yeah. they're acting on our behalf. Yeah, this is done in our yeah. name. So yeah. remember that when yeah. when you're thinking about these things that that she released. Now, like so many leaks that are embarrassing to the U S government. They focus, they don't focus on the content of the leaks. They, yeah. You know, um, I mean, as Scott Horton keeps saying about the, the DNC leaks, why didn't it just show that Hillary Clinton was such a wonderful secretary of state full of integrity? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> it was damaging to her. Why? Exactly. Because it showed that she was at least 
arguably incompetent at her job and absolutely corrupt. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely. But we don't focus on the content. We no. focus on, on the on leak. How it got, how you yeah. got that to the information. Yeah. So, um, so and one of the arguments about Manning, and I, I know when I brought up the Manning stuff to my mom, that she was livid about how he had um, endangered or caused the death of uh, of U.S. military people. And I remember that yeah. being a big story at the time. It, it I, was at the time. Um, and I was, you know, certainly today, and I'm not sure if I was at the time, but certainly today when, or, you know, last week really, when mom was talking about that, I was, I was skeptical. Yeah. But I didn't know. And yeah. so, but since then, I went and started looking some stuff up just to, to be sure. I wanted to see yeah. how much damage those leaks had actually done to, to U.S. intelligence assets or to military in the field or what have you. Yeah. Um, because... I mean, I don't want leaks like that to endanger our military folks. Although, well, we'll come back to that. Um, the What I did find was that that's all just a fabrication. It just didn't happen that way. Yeah. Uh, there, um, in August of 2010, not long after the leaks, uh, the uh, Jeff Morrell, who was the Pentagon spokesman at the time, said that there was no evidence that anyone had been killed because of the leaks. Yeah. Um, and then in October of the same year, 2010, uh, the Robert Gates, who was the defense secretary at the time, um, sent a letter to the Senate Armed Services Committee chair, who's Carl Levin, stating the leaks did not compromise any key intelligence sources. Yeah. Well. So there, wa- there was no, there was really no damage. So that was that was all just a story from the government to try to to try to stiffen this yeah. whole deal. Yeah. But and that's one of the few areas where I think honestly when it comes to classified information in general, mm-hmm. like that's um active operations is really one of the few areas where I can kind of condone there being some I mean because we don't need to know what we don't need to compromise people that are out there doing what they're doing. Um not that would I would we say would we add in a legal war on top of that? <laughs> I would well, and that's what I was fixing to say. Now I don't condone everything that's being done in the way it's being done, but I I, I would like to add that amendment that <laughs> legal war would be would be important. Well, so. I mean, that's I was thinking about this. So imagine that leaking the information about the civilian deaths, yeah, or that helicopter crew. All yeah. right. So imagine leaking that information about that helicopter crew uh, put those men's lives in danger for some kind of retaliation. Yeah. All right. Does, is that a reason not to have that information out there? I mean, I would say no. Because to me, it's like this whole thing is like blaming the informant that well, outs the mugger Yeah. <laughs> for putting the mugger in danger from retaliation from the people that he mugged. Yeah, but in this scenario, those those people in the helicopter were in the wrong. Absolutely. So I, I don't really have a whole lot of sympathy for them. The people I would have sympathy for are the ones that are doing what, even even though I disagree with, with the war in general, that are still doing what they're supposed to be doing in an as honorable way, I guess, as you can. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, you, you don't want, I, I wouldn't want to see our military people put in in un, undue danger over over something that wasn't important. Okay. Like, why are we there in the first place? <laughs> well, I, it, <laughs> we shouldn't be there in the first place. <laughs> okay. So, in the end, what we're saying is it would be a lot better if we just brought them home from these I never-ending mean, wars in that's Afghanistan. That's my and, you know, position. Yeah. Um, now I agree. Everybody now I know everybody's not going to agree with me on that, but but that is my position: is that that you know, we should, if we brought all of these people home, we'd have a whole lot less problems. Yeah, I mean, I just saw a report, and I, I didn't get to really dig into it, unfortunately, because I didn't have time. Um, but I, I saw a report; I think it was on Yahoo News, which is a little oh, wow. surprising. Yeah, um, it was linked from antiwar dot com. That's where uh-huh. I came across it. Yeah, where we had, uh, I believe, it was thirty six. Um, active code named operations going on in uh, across the northern half of Africa. Really? Yeah. yeah. We got a dozen or so bases yeah. in 
eight or ten countries in North Africa where we are actively engaged in military operations. Yeah. Now, those of you out there listening, how many of you knew how much activity we had going on in Africa? Yeah. How many of you knew that we were actually involved in Africa at all? Yeah. I mean, if you're not keeping track, like that that whole thing about those guys that died in Niger a couple of years ago, yeah. um, that could have slipped right by you. Did you know that we're still fighting in Somalia? Did you see Black Hawk down? That war's not over. <laughs> yeah, we're still um, there. <laughs> um, we're fighting in the Sudan. We're fighting in Chad. We're fighting in um, in Mali. We're fighting. We're fighting all over the place. Everywhere. We have active military operations Everywhere. in all of these countries. And then we wonder why they want to attack us at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a really great article by uh, Danny Sherson um, yeah. that I read last night. I guess. Um, and that one can be found on antiwar.com also. Like yeah. I said. Going to be is, saying this a lot. <laughs> this is an everyday visit for me. Yeah. Um, but uh, Danny Sherson is a retired major um, from the U.S. Army. Yeah. And he wrote an article uh, about the, we've got to fight him over there so we don't have to fight him over here. And how yeah. absurd and that idea clearly is. false that argument is. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a horrible argument. I mean, that's it's hard to stand on that argument. <laughs> Um, if oh if gosh, you know what's really going on, then don't buy into all the propaganda. Yeah, one of our great generals, Kelly, or one of the I can't remember. Um, I say great, great in yeah. in, pro, in in quotations. <laughs> yeah, um, was talked about uh, insurgent math years ago in yeah. Afghanistan, where you kill one, you create twenty more. Yeah, like the. I mean, um, the Al Qaeda forces or the ISIS forces? I guess it was the ISIS forces. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of our our war against ISIS, numbered in the hundreds, there were yeah. like four hundred of them. Yeah. The U.S. military has turned that four hundred men yeah. into thousands across all of the Middle East. It's easy to do, and all you have to do is is think of the inverse of that. If if there was a foreign invader here. Doing stuff to us, we would yeah, be, stand- we'd be we'd be sharing rifles. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's just the way it is. I mean, it's a common if if you look at it from their perspective, it it starts to make a lot of sense really quick. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we should probably try and wrap this up here pretty quickly. I was gonna say um, we kind of went off on a little yeah <laughs> a little detour. This is it's important though. I, it I is. think that it's certainly important to to point out. Um, how because i think all of this in in the end comes down to our active military operations it does i mean a lot of these problems like this whole assange thing would be a non-issue if we hadn't had military out there in the first place acting outside of the law yeah and so it's an important point and back to the assange case and this is like this is a fair place to close because i'm going to end it with a little list of things that i'm really unhappy with trump about (laughs) right now all right and this is one of them. So yeah. the Assange case that we've now arrested and requesting extradition, and we have probably a year before he's actually extradited. This, well, they, these things are supposed to take time. They're supposed to take time, but the I heard some reports saying that we could be looking at the end of the summer. That yeah. they're like expediting this majorly. Yeah. Well, and they're you know the whole Ecuador letting, like removing um, their protection of him. Yeah. Uh, that's been connected to, and I haven't gotten to read enough about this to make, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I I can't make any kind of solid statement about it. Um, But it seems to have been connected to some IMF money that we were offering to Ecuador because the U S really controls the IMF um, and the world bank to a a significant degree. Yeah. Um, And we use the world trade system to try and keep countries in line. There's, there's, really no doubt about that from my perspective i say look into it there's plenty plenty of information out there um but there in the assange case there's no new information yeah like everything that they're using in this indictment was known in 2010 2011 yeah and um the obama justice department dropped a lot of this they didn't they didn't pursue any kind of indictment because of its infringement on the first amendment yeah i mean they were aware of the danger that it posed to journalism yeah because what he's doing isn't any different than what any other journalist organization is doing and it is important for people to be able to report on the i mean the whole purpose of free press is to report on corruption in government 
to make sure that the people are informed of what their government is doing in their name. Yeah. And that's why they're allowed to print whatever it is that they come across. Yeah. Um, and now the big difference, though, is that a lot, a lot of major media checks with the White House before they <laughs> release any information. Yeah. Um, and Assange doesn't really. Although no. they have, you know, after the first couple of releases, they did get better about, like, trying to cover up some names and so forth, not put yeah. people in harm's way. Yeah. But... There's to me, I don't see a problem with publishing it as is because yeah. then it's easier also to verify for anybody else. Yeah, yeah, it's that. De- yeah, it's definitely a lot harder to forge that. Um, so the Obama Justice Department didn't pursue this because they recognized the danger to to the free media portion of the First Amendment. Yeah, and Trump is apparently the Trump Justice Department. Yeah, it's not concerned about that. Now he obviously has kind of a. a a difficult <laughs> abrasive relationship with the media yeah. and i understand I, I mean i can understand why he wouldn't like the media oh yeah uh, but um this is this is a founding principle here yeah this now, is I mean, not something that this, he can overstep well and this isn't the media he should be having a problem with anyway well that's absolutely true. i mean like i mean i get having a problem but he with doesn't CNN. even know who he is <laughs> Even though he mentions WikiLeaks throughout his campaign repeatedly, yeah. I saw a montage the other day that was classic. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a this is certainly an issue that he needs to be uh, he needs his feet held to the fire on. This yeah. is and he's in well, a position that he can put an end to this. And he and he may get his feet held because, like I say, he took a lot of crap for like not. WikiLeaks, that's not really my thing. Mm. Like, he took a lot of crap for that from from his side of the party on that one. So, but the thing you run into is you got to remember the Republicans don't like Assange, like him any more, Assange, any more than the, the left does. Like, yeah. they, like, the left most recently had their run in with him, but the right hadn't forgotten. And this is actually something that I forgot to mention. I think it's an important point. Um, because we have a, the United States government has a history of, of um, projecting its own law enforcement throughout the world no matter what. Yeah. Uh, Julian Assange is an Australian national. Yeah, yeah. Um, none of these things that he's accused of yeah. happened while he was... In the U.S. In the U.S. or yeah. even in a U.S. jurisdiction. Yeah. All right. So the other thing that you have here is you have the U.S. government extraditing a foreign national for ostensibly for breaking U.S. law outside of the U.S. Yeah. All right. (laughs) Nobody has a problem with that. I have a problem with that. I'm just saying that's that's a problem. So we have. Trump attacking freedom of the press again, or the Trump administration. I, I don't know how much he really has to do with it, but I know that he can put an end to it. Yeah. Um, in addition, just in the last few days, we have launched more sanctions against what Bolton calls the Troika of tyranny in the, um, in the Western Hemisphere, which is Venezuela, Nicaragua, and, and Cuba. And this is another one of Trump. And I, I think that Trump is absolutely on board with this one because he's using the socialist thing to attack his opponents in the 2020. Yeah. Campaign. Well, that's he's going to he's going to have to use that in the 2020 campaign. Whoever gets elected on the left, he's going to frame them as a socialist. And if it's Bernie Sanders, he's not wrong. Yeah. Well, and he can <laughs> attack he can attack socialism within this country all he wants. Yeah. Oh, it's, I'm good with that. Yeah. It's, it's not the U.S. place, though, to tell other countries no. in oh, the region. Oh, absolutely. Like Venezuela, if they want to keep their economy crashed, let them do it. Yeah. I mean, like I say, I'm not, I'm not defending socialism. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, I, and I understand. I want to make that clear yeah. to, the, to the listeners. Like, yeah. If he wants to attack socialism, he can. Yeah. If he wants to attack other countries because they're socialist militarily, yeah. there's a real problem. Oh, agreed. And, and sanctions, no matter what anybody says... Sanctions are just... They're an attack. They're an, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and they're far worse for the people that we're supposedly trying to protect than for anybody else anyway. Yep. yep. Um, and they don't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, all the all you're really trying to do with the sanctions is make the people rise up yeah. against their government. I mean, that's that's the idea behind them. It's not so much to even punish the people up top. It's to get the people to punish the people up top. 
But what ends up happening is that the people up top managed to spin it as propaganda against yeah. the U.S. government. So. That the U.S. government, because of what the U.S. government is doing to this country, yeah. you're starving. Exactly. Yeah. So, so nobody wins in this. Like yeah. this is a this is a no win situation. So we have that then also the the. Troika of tyranny yeah. sanctions. Now, I hadn't heard of that. I mean, I knew we were still hot and heavy behind the scenes. It hasn't so much been in the media lately, but but Venezuela's still on the table. Oh yeah. Don't don't. Oh, and they're still talking about a military intervention. Oh yeah, it's on the table. I mean, it's it's absolutely on the table, and it wouldn't surprise me if we don't see it at some point in the next year. Things have not gone our way so far, and it, for yeah. the same reason, essentially, like yeah. okay. The Venezuelans may not like their current government, yeah. but they don't want us deciding for to them. To give them a government. They'd rather make yeah. their own mistake. Like any person, right? Yeah. Like, it, it's it's hard to be told what you need to do to improve your life. Yeah. It's easy. It's Everybody would rather make their own mistakes than be forced into the right way of doing things. Yeah, it's true. Or, well, maybe not everybody, but most. But it, it's, it's human nature. It's a big part of human nature. Yeah. And then finally, as long as we're on this list of things that Trump's done that have upset me in the last few days, yeah, um, he vetoed the uh, the war powers resolution about getting us out of Yemen, which that was absolutely disgusting. When I saw that, I was I was very upset. Well, did I you was, see what he said about it too? That they're I didn't. In, they're infringing on his um in his power as the president to wage war. Essentially, I mean, I don't remember exactly. Well, how you don't said. have that power. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I was like, read the damn constitution. Yeah, you don't have that power. <laughs> the, You've never had that power. Power. Yeah, the Constitution says that the president is the commander in chief of the military forces when we're at war. In times of war, absolutely. And we haven't declared a war since World War II. Congress declares war. Yeah. So. So they are actually like trying to enforce the Constitution in a way, although they're doing it through this War Powers Act, which yeah, is which questionably should, yeah constitutional anyway. But um, but yeah, I can't believe that we're. Uh, and he said, you know, well, we don't have active U.S. military in Yemen. Yeah, but we're we're, like, we're providing all this weaponry mm -hmm. to the Saudis. It's the yep. U.S. Navy that's that's blockading Yemen, <laughs> that's preventing food from getting in there and, and yeah. causing, like, the worst humanitarian crisis, certainly so far in this century. Yeah. Um, where you've got and it just, hundreds I mean, of thousands of people starving. You've got a huge cholera outbreak. I mean... It amazes me that it doesn't get more play. I mean, I guess it shouldn't amaze me, but that that can be going on over there. In like, you watch the news every day, you don't hear about Yemen. Yeah, it ain't there. I mean, every now and then PBS will put something up about it, but that's rare. And that's the only. I think that's the only station I've seen it on. Yeah, I, I was talking to a friend today. This is one of the weird things about Trump. Um, I was talking to a friend today who really doesn't like him, and I get it. Yeah. Um, but, does he have the derangement or does he just not like him? Because there's a difference. There's it, a difference between not liking him and and being down with the derangement. It's questionable. I would think that it would fall towards derangement. i got to be careful because she's probably going to listen to this. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm just asking. I would like think that it would fall towards derangement because anybody who says that I don't like anything that he's done... Is deranged. Yeah. Um, I mean, Because it, there's got to be something. That, like, he's so... He's so back and forth. He's so on both sides of the aisle that he, well, yeah. there's no real consistency to to what he's done. And so there has to be I mean, something he's, yeah. that he's done. And he's done plenty. That he would get behind. I mean, he's done plenty. I mean, I don't agree with everything he's done, but mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't disagree with everything he's done either. Yeah. So, but she was talking about how um, it, it's that he never finishes anything. Yeah. Um, and that every week there's some new crisis. Yeah. That that's separate from the last crisis, that and he yeah. none of it ever gets resolved. Yeah. And and she's right about that. Now, now I pointed out that most of these are not crises; they're created. A lot of that you they're can, made into crises by the media. I was fixing to say a lot of that blame needs to be placed on the media and the way they report. But but there's so many topics that come up. This is this is the thing that I find interesting. There are so many topics, so many policy issues that come up because of Trump. Yeah. And and when I first see them come up, I'm like, all right, now this is going to be interesting. This Because he's who he is and can't stop talking or tweeting or whatever, yeah. um, we're going to get to have a discussion about this thing that, that doesn't usually get discussed. Yeah. But because there's so much hate for this guy, yeah. 
that the discussion is never actually about the policy. Yeah. And that's and that's what's amazing. Like, yeah, it's you don't you don't actually dive into like the gold standard or any of the stuff. It's mm-hmm. all like, well, Trump's an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Orange it's all man about how, bad. So, how terrible Trump is and we can never address the policy issue. Yeah. Yeah. Um and so it's like it's this interesting thing about him where he brings up these topics that don't generally get but discussed. But once again, you can take that back to the media. But you don't because, actually get to discuss it. Well, the, because the media doesn't want to discuss it. Well, that's true. And that's and that like I say, a lot of the blame goes on the media for that one. Yeah, I think most of the politicians don't really want to discuss. Well, it no, either, oh, they absolutely yeah, don't want to. discuss This is it. another one of those situations where it's like, well, they're better off not taking a stance on anything. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, well, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say about this. Uh, do you have anything? anything I think we pretty well covered it all. I'm sure after we get off the mic, we'll think of something. Because that, that's <laughs> always the case. I'm trying to rack my brain if there was anything else here that we needed to go over. But Yeah. So, I mean, um, bottom line, at least from the perspective of the Liberty Mike, uh, Chelsea Manning, hero. Yep. Julian Assange. I don't know. I fall short of hero, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of I'm kind of from what I've gathered, he's kind of a douchebag. Yeah. So he's not like <laughs> it's not like I like the guy, but um, is he's done nothing wrong, and he's put a lot on the line. Mm-hmm. I uh, mean, well, he, clearly, he's yeah. I mean, he spent how many years in Ecuador in the embassy? <laughs> yeah, he spent s- seven years um, holed up in the embassy in the Ecuadorian embassy in London. Yeah. I mean, that's, has not been outside. That's a huge years. sacrifice yeah. for for like being a journalist, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So um, he certainly risked a lot to to get us information that I think we deserve. Yeah. Agreed. So, um, so that's that's where we are. Uh, so all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, as always, if you have any comments, uh, please, you know, send them to us on. Facebook or wherever. Where is there any else anywhere else you can send us comments? Ah, uh, probably you not. Gave, you I, gave out your email address one time. I, yeah, I if you if you care enough, you can go back to the first episode and pull up my email address. I'm gonna yeah. set up a like a general email address for the podcast at some point. I'll yeah. I'll do that. That's that's on the list with the Stitcher thing that I still haven't done. <laughs> also, so those things still in the works, um, but. We're still available on iTunes. Yep. yep right. Yep. And uh, so far. and Podbean. Um, or through the Podbean app. So uh, follow us there. Um, leave good reviews or negative reviews. I, we'll, we'll read tell, them either tell way. Tell us what we you pre- think. We prefer <laughs> good reviews would be nice. Uh, but we definitely we want to hear criticism. So tell us what you like, what you don't like. This is still kind of a, um, a podcast kind of in flux. I don't know that we've really found exactly where we're going with this. I, I feel a little no. better about what we're doing, but... Yeah. Um, but like and share and tell your friends. We certainly would like Please. to build up a bigger audience, um, and because uh, we feel that a lot of the information that we provide out here is important that people need to know. Absolutely. And uh, in in the meantime, uh, try and stay free, and have a good night. Ciao. Later. <laughs>